We're live on Facebook. I got no intro song. We're going to get rocking and rolling. How we talk to you? All right. Good to see everybody. All right. Uh, we'll get started here uh, in a good way, in a good prayerful way. Uh, I ask uh, Dixie Earl Bullhead if you could share a, a prayer with us in a good way, if you're able. as grandfather look after our younger ones who are still being affected by this virus and also the people are fleeing their homes and because of this fighting that's going on over there in a country where tragedy has struck them and it's, we hope that we can hear their prayers and help them people out. So I am to Kashi Lam Petu Waka Akeo Wakedana Wopila Chich. Thank you for this day. Now to Akahena Oyaka Niga Kihena Isa Oyaki Bantas Wuchikeki. In a hectic lakes you want to see what's ticked. I ask my relatives and friends to think about those traumatic events taking place in our lives and to pray for each other, help each other, and think of each other in a good way so that we may overcome and go back to our ways in which we're so enjoying in this, this lifetime. So I have Tukashi Nakole Ujima Kaija. What Wochek you have now, Isaac Etka, Chea Yapsus Lecha. Its Mother Earth is also crying over what's happening to her in floods and hurricanes, tornadoes. We ask that things may work out for us here on Turtle Island and throughout Makochi, Sitchomen, and throughout the world. We are going through some changes that oftentimes are. We think about those things when you get older and I hope that things work out. So guidance things are good things may come our way. So I had Hokashila Le Okisha Le Okola Kokuchia Pile It Hakaka Uchak. We ask for guidance and our discussions and that we need to educate people as we go as elderly so I want to go to to help us with that. So now so we send these wishes in this in a humble way so that you may hear our prayers and help us towards it, through the four directions. So I Kashila and when I came to Chikia, you had chanted that I saw you watch the yukcha and Kagi. So I had Kashila, Ushi Maya, Kashila. Oh, mitake Oh, mitake Oh, Oh, beautiful prayer. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this started. Okay, so uh, relatives, uh, what we like to do with those of you that are following us on uh, social media, 
joining us on our webinar. We have some students and even a few employees. We try to do our weekly drawing. And so we have a Buffalo Chasers jacket. Actually, Tommy's rocking one of those right now. Yeah, that's our, uh, our brand new jacket. So that we got one of those up for grabs. Then we also have a Kindle Fire tablet. And so the, the winners of those are for the tablet is Mr. Cody Calder. Cody Calder, winner, winner, chicken dinner. We also have uh, the winner of that Cho Buffalo Chasers jacket, is Brianna Buckles, ladies and gentlemen. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations to Brianna and Cody. You can retrieve those items at the War Eagle Vision Building here at Poplar Main Campus. So uh, give us a like, give us a share, smash that love button. That's how you get your name in the hat for next week's drawing. So congratulations to you guys. Um, so with that, you know, uh, you know, what do you got for us, gentlemen? Oh, how to die, Chano on our cat. Hey, ha, hey. How me doc, yepi, dying, I hippy. Ushima like chair with Chasha Mielo, ho, hey, Chajemi, Tom, I'm Nisha gay. Doba ima chiape. I'm betu kile mi chante at the org like in a hana pet shoes up a low. Dia ya hippy acte. All right, my relatives, and again, as we start these things off, uh, I always try to be mindful of uh, some of the needs that are not only in our communities, but also, you know, makasi uh, tomini And again, that means all around the world, around the whole universe, you know, everywhere. And I'm glad that uh, So in that whole, in that, in that way, we are always mindful of uh, kind of going beyond ourselves and the development of our character. We can uh, uh, be strong like that and represent and not only ourselves, but our family, our tribe, our community, and in and, and a really dignified, honorable way, we can do that. We can exercise those virtues in a manner in which is gonna be beneficial to, to all of those entities that we represent. And so that we can continue to maintain the integrity of who we are as a people. And we do that uh, because we come to that understanding at this, like my older brother was sharing, as we get older, our, our attitudes, if you will, appear to change and kind of more towards that wuksape, kind of the, the sharing of that uh, wisdom uh, in a different manner, instead of telling people what to do, how to do it, we kind of graciously share with them and that's what our intent is here. And so as we do these things, uh, you, 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 I'm so glad that uh, Chie uh, Earl explained himself uh, as he spoke the language and, and then uh, explained it in, in the uh, So in that whole process, we always try to relate to one another based on communication. So at this time, I'm really grateful that we have an opportunity to come together like this with my older brother being down in Fort Chates and uh, Toshka upstairs in his office. And of course, me comfortably sitting in my office, as well as all of those that are observing us are sitting comfortably in their homes and got their little tea and got their little cigarettes there smoking or whatever the case may be, got their pets around them, bringing them comfort and understanding the importance of that. You know, and, and again, the reason I'm, I'm sharing like this is because, again, we need to understand the importance of that diversity and that uniqueness that's based on natural law uh, should become an enhancement enrichment for the sake of the growth of our children. But include yourself in that process should become an enhancement enrichment for the sake of your own growth. And as you go, you can continually share that graciously in a good way without having to tell people how to live or how to do this, how to do that, but just share with them based on, you know, what we call abstract learning, experiential teaching. That's the best way. Uh, that's the way we're taught. I was never told what to do, but uh, I have just made an observance of, of the way my dad would do these things. And then I'd kind of follow his guide based on when it was my turn to take on some of them responsibilities. And that's that experiential teaching that, that we go through. That's why You'll always hear the older folks say, I never tell you to do something that I haven't already done. Because again, they become 
uh, a part of that, that whole process. And I'm not just talking ceremony, but I'm talking walking this red road, man. Mitake epioya. Chanku luta agao, man. You know, we, we, we go like that and we talk like that because, again, it's the importance of identifying as to who and what you are as an individual. And, in, and through that identification of who you are from the inside out, from your heart, what's in your heart goes to your mind, goes through your mind and comes out your mouth. And in that, you're sharing that prospect of your learnings, of what you, you learn throughout your life. And if you learn how to be really harsh and really mean and, and grouchy and hateful, then that's what you'll be. But we accept that as well, because uh, the key word in this whole Changleshka, the circle of life, is uh, inclusion. It doesn't matter what your disposition is. It doesn't matter what your attitude is. It doesn't matter. But as we go, we're hoping that, uh, uh, again, we can uh, start preparing for that mystery of death. And not to fear it, but to really uh, uh, get ready for it. Eh? Be good to everything and everybody as well as you can. And then as we do these things, we understand that the, the nature of the beast and a lot of this confusion, a lot of this uh, disruption around the world is politics. Eh? That's why we, we, we try as, as hard as we can to remain apolitical and apersonal. That's why we don't tell people things, do this, follow this rule, have to fulfill this policy. We got to get to this objective right now. Da, da, da. Uh, and we, we don't do that. Eh? And, but there's times that, that you need to do that. There's times that you need to, to really get in the mix with the ones that live so fast and, 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 and all that good stuff. So you can keep up with the Joneses, keep up with the get your car, get your house, get, pay your bills, your heating bill, and, and get some food on the table, and you got to keep up with them. But again, we just remind people that uh, inwardly, on the inside of you, as a human being, you have a heart that wants you to be able to exercise all of those virtues, the compassion, the empathy, the the understanding, the patience, the loving, the caring, the sharing, all those things, you know, that we could practice each and every day. And then when somebody comes to you and is in need of something, uh, sometimes <laughs> all you got is a prayer. <laughs> so you got to share that with them, eh? But uh, sometimes you got a couple of extra bucks and so you share it with them and you, you let them know, go buy a sandwich. You know, they're not going to get sandwich. Right? <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't be out there dinging you. But that's understanding. That's, again, that goes along with that woksape, eh? that wisdom of understanding how humans are. We do stuff like that, not to be an enabler or codependent, but we do stuff like that because, again, we understand that uh, that commonness of who and what we are as a people. We're wishing to let them know that, hey, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And if I could try to strengthen that weakest link somehow, some way, just a little bit, maybe just $2 worth, eh? Because <laughs> a lot of them times, those guys, uh, those individuals are, are fighting that, that uh, addiction that they carry, be it with alcohol or drugs. And sometimes they just need that, that one can of beer to get them normal, eh? Because to uh, help them go beyond that, that illness, that addiction physically. And again, that's something that... Uh, we need to always pursue. We, we, you know, there's a, there's a thing that the art of war, there's a book that I read, it's called The Art of War. And, and uh, it said in there, if you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you'll realize defeat 100% of the time. But on the other hand, if you know yourself, but you don't know your enemy, you'll realize defeat only 50% of the time. But even more than that, if you know yourself and you know your enemy, you'll realize victory 100% of the time. Think about that one. That's why as we do these things, we go beyond this controlling factor, uh, this key denominator and all of those things that uh, keeps us from being critical thinkers, keeps us from being free spirited, keeps us from being uh, the spiritual people that we all want to be, and that's fear. Hey, if somebody can make us afraid, uh, then they can control us. 
So, but going beyond that fear, and of course, naturally, we all have that, you know, fight or flight, fight or flight, uh, you know, it, that, that's instinctive. That's, that's just an in instinctive need for uh, survival. So in that, we, we deal with those things, understand our capabilities, our potential in certain areas, and then uh, we, we protect ourselves in that way. Uh, but it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing selfish about that. But when you make it political, then it becomes uh, 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 confusing. Then it becomes kind of all messed up, a eh? lack of direction, lack of guidance and all that. So that's why we talk about pursuing this woke sape, this wisdom by talking and just sharing, communicating with those that may be older than you. My dad told me, he said, I don't care if somebody just one day older than you, my son, you always respect that that age, eh? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I try to do. And again, uh, we, we always do those things and, and try to live life as comfortably as we can and, and not uh, kind of uh, get involved in that negativity. And, and again, uh, the war in your, your, wherever it's at, where's that war at, Tushka? Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah, Ukraine. In Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, that war in Ukraine. It's affecting us indirectly. Uh, price of gas, uh, anxiety. Uh, maybe we have relatives that are serving in the military that we don't know if they're going to be pushed over there or whatnot. And, yeah, and we're trying to stay out of it because we don't want to become a world war. But it, people are thinking like that. And so I'm so glad that my older brother had, had shared with us in his Wuchekia these, these, these things that all of us all think alike because we're trying to uh, what they say, in our language, we share that. That means uh, peace all over the universe. So when we do ceremony, that's how we go. And with that understanding, we realize the importance of the main thing we do that for is because we'd like a safe return of our relatives from those uh, disrupted places so that they can bring back to us um, uh, these stories of survival not only from themselves, but for the folks that they were trying to help and understand to get them to a safe place and stuff and protect them and defend their territory sometimes. And so we want our relatives to come back and, and share with us those stories of survival. And, and that's what our agichita, the men and the women, you know, agichita oyate ki wuchasha bile and we apile. Chanku washte unkupi. And again, we always try to keep them in our prayers because we know that the struggles that they have and then when they return we also have to help them understand oh there was lots here in your family that was praying for your safe return so don't forget them so that respect is reciprocated eh? and then nobody gets a uh, kind of now easy about your, your 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 purpose that you you fought for remember we talked a little bit about last time about Usually there's one person in the family that will represent the, uh, that, that honor and that dignity for the sake of their name. Hey, I think we spoke about that a little bit somewhere in these, these things. And so, again, we always try to understand the importance of that one individual didn't go there just to represent themselves, but their family, their tribe, and their communities which they come from. So that's, that's another thought as I listen to the prayer of my older brother here. I know that he has some thoughts that he would like to share with us, but I just wanted to kind of share that with all of you so that we can all continue to pursue, utilize this IT perspective, this uh, virtual experience of communicating. And, and again, you can always get on the YouTube and check out uh, uh, the, the podcast of um, Buffalo Chasers, Fort Peck Community College, Buffalo Chasers, and, and uh, it'll come up, all those things. And so hopefully it becomes a tool that much you can uh, uh, learn from, uh, just gain understanding from, uh, we're not telling you anything, we're sharing with you. The choice is yours as, as it relates to how you wish to carry those things that, that we share, those values that we share, but at the same time, understand that the, in, in the eyes of the spiritual energy that exists out there that people refer to as heaven or God or creator or whatever, we're all the same, eh? And so I just wanted to share that. I know Chie has some, uh, uh, some points that he'd like to bring up. What you got going, Chie? Nature, like, wanna kick that? Ushia can talk to you. Okay, I will. Tokyo, Dada, will. 
Where'd he go? He's, uh, looks like he's praying or he's sleeping. One of the two. You, yeah, it's been on there for quite a while. Isn't it? Can you oh, hear me? Yeah, we can no, hear you, but your picture is froze. It looks like I can't see you. Nobody prays that long, heck yeah. Well. <laughs> Anyway, two two things uh, entered my mind as far as uh, you know. When you set a pattern in your life, you know you're always going to be. It becomes a standard way in your part, you know, your life, daily life. Anyway, my first thought, uh, in my in my home setting, it was Lakolia was widely spoken throughout the friends and relatives of my aunt, you know, the grandmas and. Yeah. You know, Uncle Ruben, you know, they, they all spoke Lakota. And then our reservation on the South Dakota side is, uh, used to be called Hunkpapa County, but they changed it to, to uh, Corson County because of the war effort. Anyway, the North Dakota side, that's uh, uh, D, they speak D up this way. So uh -huh. when I was first, first exposed to it, uh, and, and looking at you know the, all the different little each job they say they're, they're the same but different. Uh, so anyway, so I was a little conscious about my fluency when I first met my in-laws and got introduced and we're having supper and I met them for the first time. First thing my mother-in-law asked me when she said, you're part French, aren't you? And I said, you, we, we, I said, because I, I, I am part French. Oh, you know, I used to think I was a full blood according to the tribal records, but my mom said, she said, your grandma was a French woman and don't you ever forget it, she said. Sagara, so, you ha. Huh? Yeah. Although it says four force, I'm, yeah, I'm part, I got, I'm in that lineage, yeah. So anyway, so, being reluctant and kind of about trying to, you know, practice talking in Dakota, you know. Yeah. I hear it around the reservation, you know, people would speak Dakota, but I noticed that they really talk fast. Like that, you know. <laughs> you know, but yeah. they say, you know. And they're used to that. So it took me a while to say, oh, he's saying Tokyo Allah and Tokyo Allah. So anyway, Tokyo Allah. And here my missus, missus said, uh, she said, talk to my dad. She said, he talks, he understands. And so I told my, spoke to my father in law, I says, after let we don't come now, walking on this day. I said, I'd like to say the meal prayer and make an effort and say it in Dakota. He looked at me, he said, oh, he said, I said, so I proceeded and I did my best to talk in Dakota from making that change from L to D. And after that, we became, we had a partnership or we had a bond with each other. We never argued with each other. We worked together and all that stuff. But so we also had, uh, he had these stories that he told me that are just, that are just, uh, will never forever be part of, you know, I, I get lonesome or something. I have memories and I laugh about those things now, you know. Yeah. But he was telling me one time, he said, he said, well, no, he said, Wazihi uni awanita wasihi uni awan Christmas comes. He said, Uchashwa hell at the mall in town, he'll nudge you now, he'd hold his hands out with some loose change in it. And he showed people as they come in, especially in Dakota, oh, 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 she could do it, you know. And he showed <laughs> yes. his coins and what he was doing, he was just he was hustling, you know. Yeah. And so my father in law wouldn't hesitate, so he'd reach in his pocket and whatever change he has, he would give it to him. So every year as that went by, that guy was was doing that, and you know, and, and one day that guy he had a five dollar bill and he was holding it out, you know, inflation. You know, <laughs> he was holding, you know, how much he could do? He's holding that five dollar bill there, 
My father went over to pretend to reach in his pocket and he grabbed that $5 bill. He said, about time you start paying me back. He says, oh, that guy. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah. then the other thing where I, I remember, and I think I spoke to you, but you know, when hardship comes around, the morning aspects is really difficult, you know. We've all yeah. been through all that stuff. But anyway, they had our amongst our people what they call a, the uh, criers. Yeah. And there was a death in a community. So these two, they lived together. Yeah. Yeah, they, anyway, so they were talking. They said, She's all He said, Bila, he said, hello, the company. He said, they made a lot of Papa, you know. Papa, yeah. What I lost they put him in bowls of people would take Papa home. He said, He said, He said, He said, Papa, you know. So they yeah. went. So they walked in, they and right away, everybody something. knew they're here now. Yeah. So if they, they, you know, what are they going to do, and what are they going to? Well, we're going to witness today's kind of thing, you know. So they all have sitting there and after they both went up there and they started, oh, it's good. Yeah. you know, they started in, you know, yeah, and getting people is emotional, you know, getting all it's okay to cry, you know, yeah. And call oh, well, that was going on, and oh. I don't know, tears are going hey, on, Anna, like yeah. this. The other one he took and he started filling his pockets with Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked back over to him and he started talking while they were crying. Oh, I said, Did you get some of that read? Did you get some of that good pop? I said, 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 I fill my pockets up so we go home and we can eat. Yeah. <laughs> Those were the things that they were, they had a place, they had a, a purpose for what they were doing, you know. And I, I remember that we were talking about that. But anyway, as, as time has evolved since the last time we spoke, you know, there's so, so much has happened in our and to the world, you know, so every day is news about what's going on in the world and all the, all the longer it takes to get to work and get ready. So when you, you listen for that, I got, went to work and I was uh, like five minutes late. And he said, he said, uh, I noticed you're late today. I said, well, forgive me. I said, but I had lots to pray for today. Uh -huh. There's a lot going on in our world has said we all need to do that so i'm sorry for being five minutes late but i was praying for the people and i walked away so we live in two worlds that we have to get accustomed to and people need to understand that especially in our community or wherever there's native americans you know that sometimes things like that happen we don't intend to but when we do the things that we believe in then you know, there shouldn't be any questions about our integrity, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so oh. I oh. thought that was, uh, didn't think I'd ever do something like that in my lifetime, but with the, the burden that's going on like that, I, I, I can't help think about what's happening over there, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's adding to see that, you know, geez, what's going on, you know. Yeah. So it's just, just it's really terrible to see that kind of suffrage going on, but, and then the people leaving their country because they have no other choice. Please. So anyway, so, Ochekia to me is a way of dealing with that reality. So tonight again, I'll, yeah. tonight again, I'll, I'll humble myself and put their thoughts in, in prayer that everything starts getting better for them and that they're getting food to eat and getting people to help them and it's happening little by little it's, it's people are getting involved so who knows what's going to take place because we cannot in no way think about uh, 
United States getting involved in that and it becoming a world thing, you know? Yeah. Economically, it is happening that way, but as far as damaging and lives, it's, that's another story. And so right now, you know, the weekly gas prices are potentially going up. So we gotta cut our, we got to cut our leisure things going with our vehicle. So I just decided to stay home today and just, and maybe start walking too, you know? Oh. To work. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting feeling better. I have the, the courage to try it, you know? Hey, it too. You know, so I I remember those as I was praying. Oh, you bet. I was praying, yeah. But <clears throat> I froze up like that when he was started like that. So people thinking this and that guy must think I'm still praying. <laughs> I don't know why it's froze up, but I'm still sitting there. Well, turn like your camera sleeping. on. Okay. Turn your camera sleeping on. Sleeping on the job. Can't see you. I don't turn know your camera that? on. Let's see this right here. Is that it? Turn your camera. This camera, camera, camera on there. there. This camera. Turn it on. Well, there's something up here now. It's got a lens on it. I opened it up. You know? So it's sad to say, but technology wise. Mary! They're calling Coming the help. Yeah, That's what oh their my job God. is now. Oh, Mary! <laughs> you know, Coach Scott, you know, like, too, so. there you go, there you go. Like, Cut. camera, action. We do a, uh, we do a, a little podcast that on Tuesdays is called Lunchtime with Uncle Tommy Mary. and uh, Nora kind of facilitates that. We talk about that kind of like stuff that we're doing here, but just for the students, they just kind of, they have a little re reference, little resource. And we bought that so that the, the video guys at, at, at the college can use that. So when we know when to start. So, yeah, yeah, cool. Oh, and then, and then guess what I just found out. Okay, mm -hmm. remember, uh, remember last summer we did that, uh, I think it was just you and me. For whatever reason, we couldn't get Earl on there, but we, we did that uh, presentation with the American Indian College Fund. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. them on that the, all, the, all the schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah here they uh, looks like they're asking us to go back. So mark your calendar if you're able. I, I volunteered us, and I don't want to have to carry that on my back, but I will. <laughs> if you guys don't make it, but June twenty first through the twenty third. Well, there'll be a, a day somewhere in there and we'll we'll bring it again. We'll make sure and get the Dexie Earl to, to join us, man. Yeah. He, he's always well received. Oh yeah. And now yeah. I see Earl's name on that. Uh I know that, it, but he's, he's in the right direction. Now he's his uh mic's off. Yeah. It's all good. Load or something. Hmm. His uh, huh. his computer, his camera disconnected, and I'm trying to get it looking again. It's... Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Cool. Just I can't see you. Cool. You look like a little fat guy with a big head. <laughs> 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 well, that's what it looks like here. Look at little Shabunka sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> So this technology, gee, so advanced, has left me behind. It's if you can't do it, your camera froze. Yeah, his camera's froze on something. Oh, yeah, we can on. we can hear you though. Yeah, we can hear you though. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Okay. I'm tired of I'm, looking at you anyway. I don't know why I want to look at you. I'm just tired of I just didn't want anybody to think I'm still. I'm in some kind of zone, falling asleep there. <laughs> there, now I don't see myself. Let's just see. Uh, Earl Bull Cactus on there. Yeah, yeah. But as good as you but, hear me, uh, that's all right. Yeah. Can you hear us all right? Yeah, nice and clear. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, and all of these things, like, uh, again, that helps us to understand uh, the importance of remaining apolitical and, and apersonal as we try to come together. And because everybody's included, and that, that addresses that the importance of that inclusiveness. Uh, I don't care what church you go to, what uh, 
who you hang out with, you're all included. I don't care what color your skin is, you're totally included in the nature, in the principles of our belief system. In a spiritual way, that's our understanding. And so as we do these things, we always make reference to ourselves as the huhu nupa, eh? the two-legged. And so in that, that's total inclusion of all human beings. Eh? And uh, again, it's, it's important that as we walk this road of understanding, uh, that, that red road, they call it, 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 realizing we have a purpose, each individual, that's a part of that, that's included, has a purpose and a dedication. And again, that's why a lot of times, uh, I don't know why, but um, you, you'll find that the control factor is not only done by people, but they teach us how to live by bells and uh, buzzers and stuff like that and go from one little room to the other. And uh, I helped, um, remember we was in that class, Elijah, with uh, Barry, and, and we did that thing. Mm. Well, you know, I, I um, scored that young lady all fours, okay? And I didn't do that just because I was uh, patronizing her. I did that because, again, I thought she did such a fantastic job in spite of the fact that, they, that she did make a, a little mistake here and there, small mistake, eh? but I thought, but the reason I give her all fours in every one of those categories is because she's trying. Eh? You know, at least try, you know, get ready, and, uh, at least try. And that's why I did that. And I think that applies to anybody that's trying to understand and learn the language as well. Instead of determining their intellect as it relates to the language uh, based on a grade that they may receive their mere presence should respect an a or the top the top line and it, it gets us away from that com competitive nature eh? but just your interest and if anybody's interested in becoming an educator i can't say enough about that i i think uh, teachers are are the most profound people i ever want to meet because of their abilities to have the patience, the compassion, the understanding, the capability to work with somebody to teach them. And, and so again, I wasn't patronizing her. I, I truly, that was truly from my heart. And, and again, we, we realized that one of the things that was shared with me as I was younger was shared with me by my, one of my moms. He said, you know, my boy, look at this beadwork. I looked at that beadwork and and I said, ah, you messed up, mom. She said, where at? You put the wrong color bead right here. I showed her and everything. Tried to thought I was good because I could see that. Eh? And she said, yeah, yeah, I did that. I did that on purpose. I said, what? You, you messed up right here. That's the wrong color bead you got right here. And it's obvious. She said, no, no, no. I did that on purpose because that represents when we try to do these things, we don't pursue perfection, but we tried to understand that and relate that we're all imperfect to a certain degree, eh? And, and we realize because in our belief system, we don't become perfect until we're dealt with, uh, we deal with that uh, epitome of redemption, uh, but uh, uh, what they call creator or God or whatever. But uh, until we deal with that, then we become perfect to be in the presence of our relatives that are all over in that spiritual energy. And that's why when our old people, when they pray, uh, they, they always want to give them a short spirit road because, again, that, that represents that uh, immediacy of coming together with your relatives under the auspice of I shall see you again. And, and again, so it's kind of that principle or that philosophical approach to life that helps us realize you know, all of these things have all uh, can come together in a good way. And oh, my God, I know it. Here's my own relative, Lila, hey, honey, na mi taki, eh? Lekshi mi tchana, tashunka witko, hukka, hukka, eh? It's a good day to die. Eh? <laughs> oh, I still. Yeah, and that red hawk, that red tailed hawk, that was his medicine. That he used to carry. Did you ever hear those stories about him? 
you ever hear those stories about him, uh, Chie, about crazy horse? Oh, red tail. What's going on, cuz? I'm, I'm on this. Well, that's on, a, that's on the um, internet? No, no, that's internet. What, uh, yeah. This this is what uh, Elijah bought right here. Can you see it? Oh yeah. Oh, he yeah, said red tail hawk. So I was wondering what you're talking about. No, no, that, no. See that red tail hawk in that picture? That's what his medicine. Well, like was. I said, I have my glasses, so I thought. Oh, next. Squint your eyes I, like I a Chinese know. guy. You remember how you used to watch the movies? Shiny on there too, so <laughs> the reflection on there to too. So. Show house. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of so shiny you can't hardly see it, but it's kind of like yeah. your forehead, you know. <laughs> yeah. Real slow. It's all slow. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah's eating on the job, man. Talk about that stuff. Pumping away, both cheeks look like a chip one. No, but does that make sense though? You know that stuff like that. You know, we're we're, we're just kind of sharing absolutely a, a, a way in which uh, to help people again remember last week we talked about in cultural ineptness relates to that oh. cultural uh, awareness and then comes evolves into cultural responsiveness when when there's when you need to be culturally responsive and, and of course we reciprocate we reciprocated that respect that they shared with us by even speaking their language eh you know a lot of a lot of our relatives, they don't understand. They always ask questions like, uh, Tommy, how come you wear a cowboy hat and cowboy boots? And I suppose I could say, um, I could tell them the truth, but I never always wore cowboy hat and cowboy boots. But now, once I come and understand the, the reasoning behind that, I, I, and I don't share it with everybody, but it, it, it helps with the identity factor of who and what I am as a Lakota person that has relatives that went and fought at um, uh, greasy grass, eh? And in that, these are what they would call, one of the stories in my family line is uh, trophies of war, the cowboy hat, eh? And the cowboy boots, we never used to wear uh, shoes, but I always had moccasins, so they took the, the cowboy boots from the, the boots off those soldiers and they kept them and uh, they start wearing them. And then the drum is also another trophy of war because that big bass drum that the Calvary had, they took that and they utilized it uh, in, in their, their ceremonies and stuff like that. So when people ask me, although I ride horses, I rode a lot of horses in my day and I consider myself a cowboy in that way, it also has, especially the black cowboy hat, it also has a different value to me as it relates to my identity. And uh, it's a trophy of war, the cowboy hat. It's a trophy of war, the cowboy boots, that drum that's there, the one with the, remember they have that bass drum that come from the schools. They tighten them up like that all the way around. That's, that's a, a trophy of war. And sometimes you'll see drums like that at a powwow. And if you don't understand the history of that, and it's usually, uh, Lakota or Dakota and a Kona person that understands that story, that the representative of trophies of war. But we don't share that because it sounds like kind of braggart and we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but we do want to maintain that identity or, or stuff like that. And so it's kind of that, that, that aspect in a humble way we like to maintain with the dignity and the honor to help people understand we're just trying to sustain who we are as a people. Does that make sense, Toshka? What do you think of a story like that? Yeah, that, that made made sense. You know, I, uh, I remember when you first told me that story about your hat. I just thought you liked that, that Western look with that Yellowstone movie everyone's raving about. I thought you were trying to, trying to look like hat. Rip. <laughs> like Rip? I thought you were trying to be like Rip, yeah, but but no, that, that was helpful in understanding, you know, because I always thought it was ironic. I was like, why are these Indian guys wearing cowboy gear? Like, that was, uh, it didn't make sense. But when you explain it that way, it, it's helpful for our understanding. So, yeah, <laughs> that's good. Hashla, <laughs> <laughs> no, he he said said he's bald. No, I got air up here. <laughs> you don't let that, that air breathe. You're going to be bald guy, man. 
no, it's got it. It's like, oh, kind of air. And it here. doesn't happen on the floor. It happens right up back here. <laughs> yeah. and that's what they call bachelors. Yeah. Amongst our Lakota <laughs> bachelors called Kashla, because they get bald headed up here because they're women on top, top, taking yeah. care of their hair. Yeah. Yeah. Kashla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You guys hear music? Yeah. Uh, I'm not good that stuff sneak. that we should get into, man. Oh, yeah. We need to do another workshop this song on is drumming. 19, 1910. It's Omaha. Omaha, they call it. Society. Omaha. Omaha. Yeah. Actually, it's Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, the doings of another tribe or another person, another people. Omaha. All the things we adopted, like Wapesha and they all came in the circle and came up river. So they observed it and saw it and they saw the doings that they were doing, you know. One of the questions I seen was uh, looking for stuff for kids to show is war bonnets, you know, the big. You know, when, when did that begin? You know, have they always been there? So I was often wondering about that. One friend of mine said that didn't, they didn't start doing that until the cameras came. Movies. Western movies. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's something I should think what we should discuss sometime how so much has changed in that, that area. Like, because when the... Uh, how would you call it? Buffalo Bill show went around all over the place. They, they pretty much went out and self, you know, identity and all that stuff. Man, you know, how they need things to, to look good, look nice. You know, you wouldn't want to wear a bond, war bonnet into battle. So that just conflict your actions, you know, yeah. and identify who you are, you know. Oh. So anyway. I was looking at all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I still got to remind you guys at some point, and I'm looking through things, but I don't know, can't find my tape, but we need to get into it. How would you call it? Uh, that drum recording. needs to be sung on. Recording yeah, those, to be. those stories, yeah. Yeah, no, not only that, but those, right now those songs. Yeah. We're planning yeah, so a trip like, down there, Chie. We're probably, right. in, did we say April or May? Uh, it would probably be better if we could do it once classes start here. That way we could just spend a two, three, four days down there. Just yeah. take over his living room, dig around in the fridge. But it, it would be good to go over there and just kind of hunker down for a few days. Yeah. But we could maybe do something earlier, or whatever you want yeah. to do. But we'll, we'll get we'll, something we'll, warmer, yeah. Yeah, we'll organize that one these days, Che. You know, Che, you was talking about the Peshla, eh? You know, I, I was getting like that right in the back of my head right here. I was kind of getting bald, eh? So I went and inquired with the old man, and he said, you know, he said, uh, long ago, he said, uh, those ones that get bald in the back of their head, that, that means they're good lovers. I said, really? He said, yeah. The ones that get bald right on the front part of their head, like uh, Che Earl, he said that they're, uh, they're good thinkers. He said, but the ones that are bald from the front to back, they just think they're good lovers. Uh. <laughs> I just thought I'd pass that little wisdom on to all y'all. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> no. Yeah, But we're just about done for the afternoon. You think they're... Uh, Connect, totally smoker. Yeah, yeah. Holy. Yeah, maybe we'll, uh, we'll we'll call that a, a wrap here. Um, but I do have a couple of announcements real sure. quick for our, our tribal college students. Um, there's a couple cool events that um, you guys definitely need to know about. There's this thing called the first annual tribal college and university native language summit, March 24th through the 25th. Check your student email or check us out on our, our Facebook page. I reshared it. It's actually uh, sponsored through the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, along with the Andrew Mellon Foundation. But uh, the keynote speaker for that is uh, Dr. Richard Little Bear from uh, Chief Dolnice College. Pretty cool old fella. Uh, 
fluent speaker of that that Shahia Shahia uh, language, and yeah. he's, um, he's a really cool guy. Uh, he, so he'll be there, and then we also still I know, have. I know the, who he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a cool guy. And then yeah. another cool event is um, remember we talked about the podcasting for students. Uh, there was this equipment that we could help them out possibly, but they're still doing. We're trying to recruit students to represent Fort Peck Community College with video podcasting and animations. You could qualify for up to a fifteen hundred dollars stipend. So uh, get a hold of us here at Student Services or check us out on Facebook. And then there's a few other. Um, internship opportunities uh, sponsored through the American Indian College Fund and the USDA. Um, lots of things happen here at the college, so I just want to keep students in the, in the loop. Oh. So that's all I got, oh. unless you guys have anything else. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll uh, what's that word? I don't want to say doksha, I want to say dohantuka or dohantukash. Yeah, dohantukash. Dohantukash. Oh, uh-huh. Dohantukash. Uh-huh. Dok star, gentlemen. Right. Go hunt to gush. Okay, oh. okay. To gush. Oh. Oh. I'm leaving. Have a good day. Don't you?